Hi, welcome to the Western Kentucky University session. I am an INACAC facilitator and we'd like to welcome Kayla Lofton. A couple of little housekeeping details. You will be answering or asking questions through the Q&A button. So we will have the chat disabled. Use the Q&A button to ask your questions. Your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see you or hear you. We would encourage you to take a look at the remaining sessions and you can check out that schedule at inacac.org backslash virtual dash college dash exploration. This session will be recorded as well and there will be recordings available at that same website. So at this moment, I would like to turn things over to Kayla. Thank you. All right, let me get my screen pulled up here. Hello students, families, guests. If you are watching this live, thank you so much for joining me today. Or if you catch this later on um, on the recorded session, that's fine too. I know that things are still so crazy right now. So I really appreciate you all just taking some time out of your day to learn more about WKU. I probably won't use the full hour today, but um, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Whatever questions you have, make sure you um, add those in the Q&A. And then if there's something that I just need to go back over and recover at the end, just feel free to let me know and I'll do that as well. Okay, so for those of you who are not already familiar with Western Kentucky University, we're located in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And Bowling Green is about 45 minutes north of Nashville, Tennessee. So we're kind of more Southern Kentucky than Western, but we're right on the Kentucky, Tennessee border. We do have a few other regional campuses that are located throughout the state of Kentucky, and those are listed here on the screen. So those include Elizabethtown, Fort Knox, Owensboro, and Glasgow. WKU is currently one of four college campuses throughout the United States that is considered a safe community of America. So what this means is every single year, we have some safety regulations and guidelines that we have to meet to ensure the safety of our students, our faculty, and our staff. So just making sure that everyone on campus stays safe. Just a few examples of these are we have emergency towers that are located throughout the length of campus. We also have a WKU B, a PD. So we Bowling Green has its own police force and then campus has its own as well. Um, the officers here, they're really, they're super nice. They're really accessible. Um, they meet with students regularly. You know, they host, host like self-defense classes and stuff like that with students. So it's really great to have them and have a positive relationship with the officers in the community, especially given everything that's going on, um, you know, just in the 2020 climate. WKU currently has over 18,000 students. So this does include our main campus, our regional campuses that I just mentioned, and also our students who only take classes online. So pre-COVID, they were never planning to step foot on campus anyway, probably until about graduation. So we are considered a medium-sized institution. Despite that number, our average class size is still about 24 students. So um, we don't necessarily believe in giant lecture halls because we know that that's not the best learning environment for our students. So we try our best to avoid that. And then as you get into your major, that number of 24 students per class, it sometimes goes down to about 17 or 18 students. We do have a student to faculty ratio of 17 to one. So this may not seem like a super big deal right now, but it's really important to have a, you know, a good amount of professors on campus because they're gonna make sure that you are successful inside the classroom and beyond that. Okay, so WKU is currently offering over 150 academic programs and that's at the bachelor's degree level. So whatever it is that you may be interested in studying, WKU most likely has a program that's a good fit for you. So just to name a few of our, like, our most popular programs, WKU is number three in the United States for our journalism and broadcasting program. So if that is something that you know that you would like to study, WKU is definitely the place for you. Um, our nursing program, is very popular as well. Um, psychology, our business school is ranked top 20 in the country. And under our business college, that includes entrepreneurship. So if you would like to start your own business, um, if you want to go work for a comp company, accounting, things like that. So um, if any of those stood out to you, um, WKU could probably get, be a good fit for you. WKU also has over 350 registered student organizations. So 
any college student that you talk to, any other admissions counselor will all say the same thing. Getting involved on campus and finding like your community or your niche, um, that's just as important as going to class, staying organized, things like that, because you definitely want to make sure that you are finding your home away from home. Um, and, you know, like I said, finding your community. So we have a ton of registered student organizations on campus. Um, so they're, you know, if we don't have something that's a good fit for you, you can start your own. But given what we have now, since we have so many, you're most likely going to find that on campus. WKU has a ton of academic resources, but I'll just list a few here. So we do offer free tutoring. So um, we have a, we use a program called Tutor Track. So you can go on there, you can select the center that you would like to go study in, um, pull up the subject that you may need help with, and then find a tutor from there. So free tutoring for just about all of our subjects. We also have departmental help centers. So every single academic department. So I'll use business again as another example. The business college has its own um, departmental help center there. And then we also offer career services. Career services is great. So if you are a student who knows what you wanna study, but you don't exactly know what it is that you wanna do like for a career or what your day-to-day -day life job would be like, uh, career services is great for that. And even if you are undecided, so like if you were like me when I was a, a, you know, a freshman student, um, I had no idea what I wanted to study at the time. So career services was very instrumental in helping me figure that out. And then they also offer um, study skills, things like that, and also resume, resume building, sorry, resume skills and also interview skills. So that's what Career Services does on campus. And like I said, we have a ton of uh, resources that are gonna help you be successful while you're a student at WKU. Okay, so moving on to the Meharan Honors College. Um, our Meharan, Meharan Honors College, I kind of like to describe this as like advanced and AP classes in high school, but just on the college level. So the class sizes are, much smaller. Um, the courses are a little bit more rigorous. There's a lot more writing, things like that. So if you are interested in being a part of our honors college, there is an additional application that's required. Um, and that deadline is much sooner. So it comes December 1st. If you are a current, current high school senior, then the application is already open for you. Um, but please keep in mind that you have to be admitted to WKU first before you apply for the Honors College and get admitted to that. So we do take a holistic approach when we're looking at your Honors College application. So the first thing here is your academic quality. So, you know, of course we're gonna look at your transcripts and we are test optional this year, but typically for honor students, we do like to see the ACT and SAT scores because that just kind of shows us more of who you are as a person, but that's not the only thing that we're gonna look at. We're also gonna look at the strength of your writing samples. So unlike the general application to be admitted to WKU, the Honors College does require an essay. And some of those essays are already listed online. So the questions are pretty fun. There's like a Harry Potter question. Um, there's another example of one where you can create your own prompt and you can answer it yourself. So those are really fun to read because students get really creative. They write short stories, things like that. And then we're also gonna look at your level of involvement. So we wanna see how involved you are at school and or in your community. So like, I, again, like I said, we take a holistic approach. So if you're a really strong academic student and that means that you have less time to, you know, maybe do some volunteer hours, that's okay. It's gonna balance itself out. So again, just keep in mind that the deadline for the Honors College is on December the 1st. Okay, so let's talk about housing. Um, so we do require that all first and second year students live on campus, and that's regardless of how many college credit hours you've earned in high school. Um, these days, a lot of a lot of high school students are graduating with more college credits, uh, but we still want you to live on campus because that's an experience that you're not really going to get anywhere else. Um, you know, if besides a four year university. So we do want you to live on campus, um, but please keep in mind all of our residence halls have been renovated and we do have a variety of living styles. And when I say style, I'm just referring to the way that the bathroom is set up. So typically your first year community style um, is a little bit more common, but after that you can upgrade to apartment style, suite style, things like that. Um, we also are offering living learning programs. So these are for students who are a part of a certain community. And if you want to live on the same floor in the same residence hall um, as some other similar students, then you can, we offer that for you as well. So just a few examples of our um, living learning programs. We offer that to our L LGBTQ plus students. If you're in ROTC, or if you're in ISEC Academy. So I'll talk about ISEC a little bit later, but this is a, pro a program that is for minority students and or low income and or first gen. So I'll, like I said, I'll talk about that in the, the next few slides. Um, but living learning programs, we have several, but these are just a few to name. 
Um, our priority housing deadline is on March 31st. So when I say priority, sometimes I get a couple of questions, but this does not mean that if you if you apply for housing in April and you know you decide that you want to come to WKU and then you submit your housing application after this, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get a residence hall or a housing assignment. But we do encourage students, especially if you know that WKU is the place that you want to spend your college years, go ahead and get that housing application in by March 31st. Because, you know, the, the quicker you submit it, then the quicker you can get your housing assignment. Okay, so for dining, there is a map here that's on the screen. So as far as our main campus that's in Bowling Green, Kentucky, this map here is a layout of our entire main campus. So it doesn't look very big from the picture. It is pretty long. Um, we are called the Hilltoppers. I know that the, from the photo, it looks flat. You can't see the hill, but our school is literally built on a hill. So this is a layout of our main campus. And as you can see, all of the food is spread out all over campus. So if you live on campus, so if you are a first or second year student who has to stay on campus, we do require that you have a meal plan. So we have a ton of options for meal plans um, that will fit your, you know, your food preferences or how much or how little you like to eat. Um, so as you can see here, like I said, there's food spread out all over campus. Um, we do offer vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free options as well, especially if you have food allergies or anything like that. Um, but having a meal plan is the most convenient way to just get food on campus. Um, and so we have a few dining halls. So we have like fresh, fresh food company. That's our buffet style residence. I'm sorry, residence hall. That's our buffet style cafeteria. So there's a ton of different options. The menu changes every day. And then we also have some like the really good ones. So we have Chick-fil-A, Subway. We have a Starbucks on campus. Um, yeah, so you don't have to go to one location on campus just to get food. We have them located everywhere. And we also have like two convenience stores that are on campus. So the funnest way that I can describe this is when you go inside of a gas station, um, you know, just you see like the freezer aisles and like there's some frozen food, things like that, but there's a bunch of snacks. Um, so we have two of those on campus as well. So, but they also have like sandwiches, things that you can get, there's smoothies. Um, so yeah, we have a ton of food options. I love talking about food because it's probably like the best part, so. Okay, study abroad is also something that I really love to talk about because I really like to encourage students to do this. Um, so if you are already thinking about studying abroad, great, thumbs up, please stick with it. If you're not thinking about it just yet, I just kind of want to go ahead and plant that seed. So regardless of where you go, I want you to consider, you know, just taking your education to the next level. So WKU is ranked number 14 in the United States for our study abroad programs because we send students to over 42 countries every single year. So um, we do have a center on campus. So like our study abroad office, their whole purpose is to help you find a program that fits you and to also find funding. Um, so typically when I talk to students about study abroad, the main two questions I get are, will I have time? And will I, can I afford it? The answer to both is yes, um, but you do have to put in a little bit of work for it. So if you are thinking about studying abroad, when you first sit down with your academic advisor and you want to plan out your schedule and you know you kind of just want to talk about your major and things that you're going to expect or things that you want to do over the next four years or four, four and a half, five, however long it, it takes you to finish your undergrad years, uh, definitely mention, mention study abroad because we do have some classes like no matter what your major is. So a lot of nursing students, they don't necessarily think that they can study abroad, but we do have some classes that you can take um, in another country. So as long as you are communicating that with your academic advisor up front, then you can you know, make adjustments and changes to your schedule and then you can make your trip happen. Okay, so as far as athletics, WKU has over 50 intramural club sports. So if you like staying active, if you like being a part of a team, um, but you know that playing college athletics is not for you or if that's something that you don't wanna do, intramurals is still a really great way to get involved. Um, um, it's still a great way to meet friends. Our intramural teams are just as competitive sometimes. <laughs> so um, they, they're still a part of leagues that sometimes travel, they play against other schools, things like that. So, um, you know, that may be something that you might wanna consider. We are NCAA division one and we are a part of Conference USA. So WKU, we have a ton of school spirit. Um, our home games are free for our students to get into. So, you know, we don't offer tickets at like a discounted rate or anything like that. They are free for you as a WKU student. 
Okay, so just a few other opportunities to list. We do have Greek life, so it may seem like a lot of students are Greek, but only about 25% of our entire student population is part of a fraternity or a sorority. Uh, we offer religious clubs and campus ministry. We know that faith is important, so it's totally fine if you want to express that. Um, you know, we welcome that. We offer a 24 hour computer lab. Um, so the 24 hour computer lab is great. So even if you have your own laptop, um, a lot of students tend to still, you know, go to the computer lab to get some homework done um, because there also is free printing there. So on your student ID that you get when you become a WKU student, your student ID is like your best friend because that's how you're gonna get into the games. That's how you're gonna get into the workout facility. And that's also how you're gonna print. Um, so get your free printing there. Um, so the 24 hour computer lab, I think that it's only closed literally two days out of the year. So I think Christmas and New Year's are the only two days of the year that it closes. Um, we offer free access to fitness facilities. So like I just mentioned with your ID, that's how you'll get into like our Preston Center. That's the most popular one. Preston has six basketball courts, a walking track and, and half, half of an Olympic size pool. So a large size pool there. So as long as the swim team is not in there, you can go in there, swim, you know, it's heated too. So even if it's cold outside, you can still go in there. Um, but yes, and Preston also offers some workout classes every single week. So there's like hip hop abs, Zumba, cardio craze, um, all of those classes and things like that are free for students to use. And then we also offer all student parking. So if you are an Indiana student and you wanna to come to Kentucky and you wanna bring your car, uh, we definitely welcome that. Even if you don't bring a car, keep in mind that we have a shuttle that goes around campus. They run every six to eight minutes and they also, they run around campus and then they also go um, to certain parts of Bowling Green as well. So, you know, it's very convenient to get around town and campus. And at night we have one of the shuttles that turns into a shopping shuttle. So it'll take you to the mall, Walmart, Kroger, um, just, you know, a few places around Bowling Green that you may need to go. So again, if you don't have a car, that's totally fine. You'll, you'll still be able to get around um, Bowling Green and campus. Okay, so this is the Intercultural Student Engagement Center. This is what I was talking about on one of the previous slides about the living learning program. So if you're a part of the academy, then you can um, live in one of the LLPs. So the Intercultural Student Engagement Center, we refer to it as ISEC. Um, so they promote an inclusive campus environment for the many cultural, religious, spiritual, and identity groups on campus. So the center itself is located in our Downing Student Union, which is like our main student center that's on campus. So ISEC is housed in there. And ISEC helps the university with recruitment, retention, and graduation of students of color. So over the past couple of years, since ISEC was formed in 2017, um, the minority retention rate at WKU has increased by about 75%. So ISEC is a fantastic facility. I'm actually the new student success coordinator down there in the center. So I'm in a bit of a dual role. Um, at the moment, but so under ISEC, you have ISEC Academy. So the Academy um, currently has about 75 students. So there is an application um, that is needed to get into the Academy. Um, so there is a particular weekend. So before you come to campus, um, before you can, before you move in, things like that, we have like an extended orientation called Master Plan. Um, so ISEC Academy students will come and be a part of that weekend. And you know, there's like a there's an additional trip for ISEC Academy students. And then we also have a program called WKU Cares. So Cares is also under ISEC. And so Honestly, the only difference between ISEC Academy students and CARE students is like the weekend that you participate in during master plan. Um, but CARE students are, you know, we check in on students every couple of weeks just to make sure that grades and classes and things like that are going well. Um, because we know that for minority students, the transition may be a little bit different. Um, I'm speaking from experience myself. I did go to WKU. I loved my experience here, um, but it was really helpful to have, you know, faculty and staff and, you know, just people to check on me. So that was really helpful. And then also the last umbrella under the pride, I'm sorry, under ISEC is the Pride Center. So for our LGBTQ plus students, there is an additional wing in the student center for our Pride students. Um, so ISEC is housed under that as well. That's housed under ISEC as well, sorry. Okay, so moving on to scholarships. So this is just one portion of our scholarship. So these are our merit academic awards. So these are only based on your unweighted overall GPA. So this is something that we did before we were test optional. So 
um, back in 2019, we kind of changed our scholarship model a little bit so that we could support more students. So as you can see here on the chart, as long as you have at least a 3.0 overall unweighted high school GPA, you will qualify for a, for a merit scholarship from WKU. So at the bottom, if you fall between a 3.0 and a 3.2, that's when you receive 2,500 each year. So this is not per semester, it's for the full year. 3.3 to 3.4, you get 3,000. And then 3.5 to 3.7, you'll receive 4,000. Actually 3.5 to 3.5 3, and up, you receive 4,000 unless you submit your ACT score and or whatever the SAT equivalent is, and then it'll double from 4,000 to 8,000. So like I said, we are test optional this year, but when it comes to like scholarships and things like that, your ACT scores may still be required. So just keep that in mind. And the merit scholarships are renewable um, up to four years. So as long as you maintain a 3.0 while you're at WKU, then you'll receive this scholarship every single year. And then it's also upgradable throughout your high school graduation date. So if you are a student that's right on the border of one of the GPA requirements, um, so if, for example, if you have a 2.9 and you know that you're going to graduate with a 3.0, as long as you submit your, up, um, excuse me, your updated transcript, then we're going to honor that and we're going to give you the scholarship. Same for if you're already on the chart. If you have a 3.2 and you know that your GPA is going to go up to a 3.3, once you submit that updated transcript, we will honor that and we will increase your scholarship. Okay, so top dollar scholarships. This is probably the biggest uh, scholarship portal that we have here at WKU. So on top dollar, there are over 1200 scholarships and those come from departments, alumni. Um, so if you're part of, let's see, like the theater department, um, there are scholarships that are specific for theater students. I know that 1200 sounds like a lot um, of college, like a lot of scholarships, but we do not make you click through that many scholarships. There's only one application that you need to fill out and you're able to do this after you get admitted to WKU. So once you get admitted to WKU, that's when you can fill out top dollar. And so pretty much the information that you provide on your top dollar application, so the high school that you went to, um, this, the program that you wanna study, um, your hometown, things like that, based on the information that you provide on the application, we're gonna match you up with some additional scholarships that you're eligible to apply for. So we're gonna, it's kind of like a scholarship matching system. Um, but the good thing about this is, even if you don't get matched with certain scholarships, um, one that I like to use, like we have like a leadership scholarship on there and it's, it says, tell me about a time that you were a leader in your, in your school or your community. And then I think it's like a 500 word essay and then you have to get one letter of recommendation from either a teacher or somebody in your community. You may not get matched with that scholarship once you fill out the top dollar application, but that's a, you know, that's a scholarship that just about any student could apply for. So you can always go back through uh, the top dollar portal and type in some keywords so um, you can type in leadership and see what the leadership um, scholarships are and, and, and apply for those. Um, when I'm talking to minority students, I always say, hey, go in, type in minority, just type in those keywords and figure out what additional scholarships there are so that you can apply for those. Okay, if you have questions about that, feel free to let me know. Um, like I said, you do have to be admitted to WKU prior to completing your top dollar application. And even if you haven't already applied or you know, if you're planning to apply and you haven't done so just yet, you can still go through the top dollar list and see what's on there. So the website is listed here on the screen and it, it's just wku.edu slash top dollar. So you can go ahead and look and see what some of those scholarship requirements are. Okay, so if you haven't already heard, um, WKU just released our new border state scholarship program. So what this means is any of the seven states that border the state of Kentucky, you receive in-state in -state tuition. So it's no longer a discount, it's no longer like 50% off the out-of-state rate, you just get the Kentucky rate um, to attend WKU. So this is for full-time, first-time first freshman students. So for Indiana students, this includes all of you. In the past, we had something called, well, we still have it, but it's a little different now. So I don't want this to confuse you. But if you're looking online and you see something about the tuition incentive program, that is not for the seven states that border Kentucky. It used to be, but it no longer is. So if you are an Indiana student, which everyone on here <laughs> most likely is, um, then you will receive in-state tuition at WKU. So if you wanna go out of state um, and you don't wanna go too far, or you know, if cost is something that um, you're considering as you make your decisions of, you know, where to go, um, definitely keep WKU in mind because with this new program, um, it's a bit more accessible now. So 
Uh, let's see, yes, it lowers the tuition cost by nearly 60%. There's nothing special that you have to do to receive this rate. There's no additional application that you need or anything like that. Once you apply to WKU and on your application, we see that you attend school in Indiana, then you automatically receive the discounted in-state tuition rate. Okay, so as far as applying to WKU, the process is fairly simple. So we only have online applications. And I'm just mentioning that because I get asked if we are on the Common App, we're not. Um, so you have to go to wku.edu slash apply or just go to the WKU website and it'll be right at the top. Um, but on that online application, it should take you no more than 15 or 20 minutes because we're just gonna ask for general information. So we're gonna, you know, we wanna know your high school, what you wanna study, your permanent address, um, your emergency contacts, things like that. So it won't take you too much time to fill that out. Once you submit your online application, that's when we're going to need your transcript. So we do not, we accept unofficial transcripts, but just being honest, what I tell my students, there's really no need to send it. Um, just, might as well just go ahead and order the official copy of your transcript. So, and it's totally fine because, you know, we know you haven't graduated yet. It's fine. Um, so your grades, we know that they're going to still be in progress, uh, but just make sure that it is an official copy. So it cannot come directly from the student. It cannot come directly from your parent. Um, it should come from your high school guidance counselor. OK, if you do use a password protected website or like a transcript service such as Parchment or Naviance, we accept those as well. Those are pretty easy to you know, maneuver and get your transcript ordered and sent to WKU. So I always recommend that if that's an option. So you'll send your transcript. And then on here, I have final transcript because you're gonna to have to send your transcript transcript twice. Um, you know, we get calls and the students are like, hey, I already sent it, but no, your final transcript just has your graduation date on it. So your final transcript is gonna have, you know, if you graduate May 30th, 2021, it's gonna have that date listed on there. And then it's also gonna have your final completed high school grades, okay? So you're gonna send one when you're applying for uh, admission at WKU, and then you're going to send your final transcript again after you've already graduated from high school. We do have a $45 application fee. Um, so this is for students who do not qualify for one of our fee waivers. Our current fee waivers are need-based. So if you are a free and reduced lunch student, if you had an ACT or an SAT fee waiver, um, if you're experiencing a financial hardship, we will um, you can apply for the fee waiver and then once you submit proof of the waiver um, then you won't have to pay the $45 application fee. There are no essays, letters of recommendation um, or anything like that that is required to apply for general admission to WKU. Like I mentioned for the Honors College, um, you will need an essay portion to apply but just applying to WKU in general you don't need any of that. Again, we are test optional for fall 2021, um, but please keep in mind that if you have between a 2.0 and a 2.49, we will need to see an ACT or an SAT score um, because based on like the admission scale that we currently use, we need to see that your test scores are gonna balance out what your GPA is. Okay, so, and if you ever wanna come visit campus, which I highly recommend, I know that all uh, college reps say, oh, our campus is so pretty, but seriously, our campus is gorgeous, is really pretty. Now that it's here, um, it's fall now, the leaves and stuff are changing colors. I had to stop like three times this morning on my way in um, to take a bunch of pictures because I'm one of those people. But um, yeah, we really recommend that you come visit campus. So we are doing daily campus, campus tours. So, uh, you know, obviously they're not like we normally have them just because of COVID guidelines, things like that. But um, so our tour capacity right now is 19 because with our one tour guide, that means we have 20. Um, so if you want to take a tour, um, go to the website that's listed here on the screen. It's just wku.edu slash visit wku. Um, we are currently posting our daily tour times every two weeks and they are posted on Monday morning. So if there's nothing available right now, check back again on Monday to see the new dates and times that are available. If you are interested in the Honors College and learning more about that, um, you know, just kind of more than what I spoke on today, uh, we do have some Honors VIP tours and you can go to the Honors website that's listed here, wku.edu slash honors um, for more information about that. And then we also have some admissions events that are coming up. So um, so I know that this is kind of like a WKU admissions event, but if you want to learn more about like from our academic departments, um, if you want to learn more about like the Intercultural Student Engagement Center, if you want to learn more about housing, um, so you can participate in one of our like open house campus events that we're hosting online um, at the moment. So those are listed at wku.edu slash admissions 
slash events. All right, I think that comes to the end of my presentation. I'm 30 minutes on the dot, so that's really cool. But again, my name is Kayla Lofton. I work for the Office of Admissions and for the Intercultural Student Engagement Center. My email is listed here. I'm just reading it out loud just in case anyone needs that assistance, but it's just Kayla.Lofton, L-O-F as in food, T-O-N, <laughs> at WKU.edu. My Twitter handle is at Kayla on the Hill. And then the admissions phone number, in case anyone needs to call in and ask some questions, it's 270-745-2551. Thank you. And now I'll just wait to see if we have any questions that come in. And while we're waiting for questions, I want to remind students before you sign out, you will come up with a very quick window that's a survey. Um, and again, recommend that you sign up for remaining sessions this week at inacac.org backslash virtual dash college dash exploration. And recordings will be available at the same website. Kayla, any questions in there? I'm not seeing any. Um, so I'm just going to hope that that's a good sign <laughs> that I did well enough. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kayla. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice of your day.